Hey, Zane Griggs here. Let me adjust this one sec. Here we go. How you doing? Uh, why, as it says in the, in, the, in the title there, why are PUFAs so bad for Why are polyunsaturated fats so bad for us? Because we've been told for, what, 60, 70 years now that we're supposed to be eating polyunsaturated fats and avoiding saturated fat. And they still haven't backed off on that too much. They finally backed off the cholesterol. Uh, sort of. They didn't really tell anybody. They just left a uh, up in uh, off of their uh, a limit, daily limit, because really the cholesterol isn't, doesn't do anything for heart disease. It doesn't affect heart disease. Dietary cholesterol doesn't affect heart disease at all. They've been showing this proof for 20 something years. Uh, but they, you know, doctors getting told the same thing. So polyunsaturated fats were told to eat, right? And yet these could be some of the most deadly fats that we put in our body. And pretty much responsible for the heart disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes increases. Okay, I know you heard me talking about sugar. Sugar and polyunsaturated fats, those two together, they make up about 70 to 80% of the standard American diet, the typical American diet. And these polyunsaturated fats are generally creating oxidative stress in our bodies. You know, oxidative stress, you've maybe heard of free radicals where the electron bounce around damaging cells. So this is oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is responsible for most of, if you even ask any doctor, oxidative stress causes most lifestyle diseases, heart disease, stroke, cancer, uh, Alzheimer's, you know, these are all lifestyles of diabetes. Oxidative stress is responsible for all of those. It's damage to our cells, uh, keeping our cells from reproducing in a healthy way or causing damage to those cells, whether they're, if they're any, any type of cells throughout tissues throughout our body. Okay. So, this oxidative stress is, is really, it's, not, it's coming from sugar, obviously, because of the inflammation, but polyunsaturated fats also create inflammation, and maybe even more than sugar in some cases, um, depending on how, how bad they are. So polyunsaturated fats would be the cooking oils we've been told to use for the last 50, 60 years, the, the corn oil, canola oil, uh, any soybean oil, safflower oil, and you'll see it not just, it's, you may not even cook with it, but it might be in the foods that you're buying as a filler or as a preservative. It could be in this healthy looking salad dressing that you're buying that says olive oil on it, but you read the ingredients, it's got soybean oil in it. Uh, mayonnaise, full of soybean oil. Um, chips are fried in usually a corn oil and, uh, or some sort of uh, safflower, sunflower oil, bran, some kind of bran oil uh, many, many times. And that's really what makes those chips so deadly. It's not the carbs in the tortilla so much, okay? Or the corn, you know, maybe it's the GMO corn that could have something to do with it. But the oil is is aging us. It's causing damage. It's causing damage to our arteries, our tissues, our brain, um, and and really, when those free radicals get loose, they start damaging the other healthy fats that we have stored in our bodies. And I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but these are really that well. Everyone knows about trans fats, right? So trans fats, even the, the government has finally admitted trans fats are bad. Trans fats, that's Crisco, right? So it's, it's a congealed, it's been cooked and processed to the point that's solid uh, poly, or vegetable fat. That's a cotton, that's from cottonseed oil. So you ever see hydrogenated, hydrogenated cottonseed oil as a filler in an ingredient? That's Crisco. Okay, it was made from cottonseed oil. Margarine made from corn now, by you know, byproduct of corn. They take the corn seed. While these are made from seeds, they extract the seeds usually with a, a, a chemical called hexane, which is very similar to gasoline. Or they use a, a, a splitter or some kind of processing that creates a lot of heat, and that heat oxidizes the polyunsaturated fat. Now, why is it so different than other fats? Saturated fats, we've been told are bad, are actually very stable in heat, and they're shelf-stable to some degree, but they're very stable under heat for cooking. Okay, which means they don't have room for an oxygen molecule to come in and attach itself and create oxidation. They don't have room for it. Saturated fats have no room. Monounsaturated fats like avocado and olive oil, okay, avocado, solid avocado is mostly monounsaturated fat, uh, mostly. Olive oil is mostly monounsaturated fat. I still try not to cook with it because there is room for oxygen. There's one open space in the molecule for an oxygen molecule to join. Um, and that limits how much it can oxidize, and, and it, it still has a higher heat point or, or smoke point for cooking than the polyunsaturated oils do, but I still wouldn't do it because there's room for oxidation there, and we just don't need it. Um, but the saturated fats are stable in that room oxidation. Why is this oxygen so bad? Well, that's what creates oxidative stress and explosion. So it's not just polyunsaturated fats with two openings for oxi oxygen molecule are twice as bad as monounsaturated fats. 
there are multiple, it's exponential. It's like, could be a million times worse. So give you an example. So polyunsaturated fats, two openings, right? Olive oil is one opening for all, for space, one space in the molecule for oxygen. Polyunsaturated fats, two openings, dynamite, six. Now it sounds like an extreme example, but that just shows you the exponential change in having that open space in the molecule. When we put heat, okay, into that dynamite, right? Spark explosion because of six open spaces for oxygen. That's oxidation. Quick, happening in a very rapid manner, very unstable. So dynamite's obviously more unstable than that oil, but how many of you know they use those, poly, those, those vegetable oils for biodiesel? So obviously it's flammable, it's oxidative, it can be burned. You're not gonna put tallow in there. You're not gonna put coconut oil to burn. You're gonna put vegetable oil. It's, it's, com it's combustible, it's oxidative. It creates that stress in our bodies, okay? In our cell, in our arteries, in our brain, okay? Um, and it creates a lot of damage. Now, trans fats, as I mentioned before, those solid fats, well, they're liquid, but it's not solid. Well, they're even the best expeller pressed organic vegetable oil that you can buy, okay, at, the, at your whatever health food store you want to choose, of uh, those corn oils, soybean oils, the seed oils, vegetable oils, not really vegetables, uh, they're grains, but they have at least 5% trans fats, even the most expeller pressed. So typical ones you're going to get name brand on the grocery store is going to have a lot more trans fats in it, causing damage. Plus, when, you, when it sits on the shelf for a while, it oxidizes more because it's unstable. And when you cook with it, it makes it even worse. So when you get those french fries, I uh, hate, to, hate, to, hate to steal your joy on these french fries and, and chips, but they've been cooking at a restaurant. Usually, they've been using that same oil for at least a week, 10 days, some places two weeks before they change it. So they cook it, cook french fries in that same oil over and over again, right? Cooking, 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 more oxidation, more oxidation just gets worse. So you eat it and it creates havoc. Forget the, forget the potatoes and the french fries. It's the oil they cooked them in. Forget the tortillas they made those chips with. It's the oil they cooked them in that's doing most of the damage. Um, I'll briefly explain. I have to do a whole video on this on how LDL and HDL, we're not, supposed, we're not really, shouldn't be afraid of LDL. That's a, that's a good thing. It's just a delivery truck. But the LDL, okay, we, when, when our arteries clog, side note here, arteries clog, okay, and we have heart attack, that's not from fat in the arteries. You can get fat around your organs, that's visceral fat, that's different. We don't have a heart attack from fat in our arteries. We have a heart attack from a blood clot caused by plaque that is unstable and breaking off. Okay, the plaque is put there from inflammation. The inflammation is the oxidative stress caused by foods we, sh you know, basically nutrients being delivered by the LDL, okay, that shouldn't be there, and they cause stress when they hit our tissues. When something like a polyunsaturated fat, a very oxidative fat that our bodies don't know what to do with, they're not used to, because we're used to saturated fats and naturally occurring fats, okay, things in nuts, already in the seed. You want to eat a sunflower seed, you'll enjoy that fat, but once it's been extracted from that seed, it becomes oxidative very quickly, because it's protected in the seed. Okay, it's not that sunflower is bad, safflowers or canola, or whatever thing that is that they take it from the rapeseed they take it from. Those things in and of themselves are not bad. When we extract the oil from them, they become unstable and oxidative. So that LDL, it, it, it destroys the marker. LDL is carrying that fat to our cells like it's supposed to, to feed them. And what carries the good fats, like saturated fats, animal fats, coconut oil, palm oil, butter, carrying good fat that our body knows what to do with, it's labeled what it is. Our body hooks it, picks it up, pulls it into the cell as it's being carried by that LDL. And then that LDL, which is just a delivery mechanism to our brain, because our brain's made up of 30% polyunsaturated fat in dry weight. It's fat, lots of fat up here. We need fat for fuel. Takes it to the artery, picks up the good fat, puts it in the cell where it belongs and everything's fine takes that oxidated fat from the polyunsaturated fat, it, the polyunsaturated fat actually ruin, like kind of damages the, the labeling or the, uh, the marker on what that is that the LDL is carrying. And so that, there's nothing there to pick it up. So what happens, that LDL eventually is, is swimming around through our vein, right, veins, and it has no one, no one wants to pick it up, they don't know what it is, it's not marked. So it ends up kind of disintegrating, the LDL disintegrates, wears out, and just drops its cargo wherever it wears out in our system. And wherever it hits, when it hits our tissues, it gets pulled into a cell, it just hits like, um, like artery tissue, okay? Uh, for instance, 
it causes damage. It causes inflammation. And then our body's our immune system, white blood cells into action, patch that up with plaques, okay, to patch it up so it doesn't break, crack from the inflammation and calm things down like spackle. And then when those get unstable after a time, they break off, our body attacks again, creates a blood clot, and that's what creates the heart attack. Okay, so side note there, this is how these things damage us. In our brain, the free radicals, which, you know, as I mentioned, 30% dry weight, polyunsaturated fat. So the polyunsaturated free radical oxidized fat gets up to our brain to refuel the brain cells and neurons. We need this fat and cholesterol for uh, brain health. It coats our nerves, right? Helps us create, connect synapses, create thought. Uh, but when we have those free radicals, free radicals out there, they just send those electron free and it's like looking for a pair and it just bounces around causing problems and causing damage to the fat in our brain, to the tissue in our brain, causing damage. Free radicals creating oxidative stress and over time, um, that's when we start seeing this Alzheimer's, which if you notice, you know, heart disease, Alzheimer's, all these things are on the rise. You know, 1900, we didn't see too many heart attacks. Now they're more prevalent. Why? We've added more polyunsaturated fat, starting with Crisco, and then margarine, and then the deadly, which are both just solid trans fats, and then all these polyunsaturated fats. It's taking us away from the things we've been eating, eggs, the, the beef fat, tallow, you know, um, when, when people cook with, you know, in island areas, they use coconut oil, palm oils, so the nut fats. Um, so anyway. Back to it. What do we do then? How do we get rid of it? Well, we're going to have to read labels to get rid of things that have polyunsaturated fat stuck in there. Uh, sorry, questions I can't read them from here. They're moving by too fast. Um, and stick to solid things that are naturally solid fats at room temperature, like coconut oil, palm oil, uh, butter, uh, ghee, which is a clarified butter, um, but still a stable saturated fat. So those things are stable. We can cook with them. We can put them on our veggies. Everything's good. Use olive oil on your salads. Put those on your veggies. Put it on your potato if you want. Okay, you know, it's, it's so much better than those polyunsaturated fats. Uh, so that's, if you have any questions, please post them below. I know this is kind of a subject that is very confusing. We get a lot of misinformation, um, but it's really important that we start thinking differently about our food. This, these things are in our food supply. They've inundated our food supply. Again, 70 to 80% of our of typical Americans' calories come from both sugar, the combination of sugar and polyunsaturated fats. So no wonder disease is on the rise. Um, I, I just, uh, I'm gonna be doing, talking a lot more about this. I'm gonna get into what HDL and LDL, really their functions are, so we're not scared of these things. We have a better understanding of what those numbers mean. But just know, what you've been told for the last 50, 60 years, for the most part, uh, by, the, by the health authorities, sometimes, sometimes your doctors, some doctors are catching on, but it's because of what they're told, they're told by the, you know, the researchers. The research is backed by food industry. Food industry makes all the foods with all the stuff in it, the grains, right? The, the polyunsaturated oils, the Crisco, Procter & Gamble, big money, margarine, uh, big money. So, they fund the research, the research tells the docs and teaches the docs their brief moment of nutrition in med school, they're, they're all three hours they get, and, and that's where it's disseminated. So we've gotta, we've gotta take charge of our health, we gotta take responsibility for our health and start looking towards those PhDs and MDs and, and lipidologists, okay, the people who study fats, who are speaking out more and more now and telling us, yeah, that's all wrong, we need to get back to more of a traditional diet to basically save us. And, and save our genes and help us live longer, healthier lives. So if you know someone that benefit from this, please post it in the comments below, tag them in the comments below, and I'll talk to you later.